Hi, my name is Dan Nelson. I'm an artist and an art teacher, and I want to help you learn how to draw the human figure better. Most people want to draw the human figure, and frankly, most people are scared to death of the daunting task of getting the figure right. I want to help you get over that dauntingness and figure out how to draw. I love this newsprint paper, don't you? Woohoo! Um, if you watched my earlier lesson on drawing the human figure, you remember that I taught that the human figure, the ideal human figure, is eight heads high. So if you want to catch up to me real quickly, mark out on your paper a figure eight of, of eight heads high. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. There we go. And then you remember last time I gave you the, the lines of demarcation where each one of these heads would fall. And they each begin with the letter N. I won't repeat them all here. Go back and look at the other one. This is our secret code for those of you who were involved in the first lesson. Let me then begin to draw, flesh out this, this figure. The human head, as I said last time, is roughly two by three. Now one of the most important principles that I employ when I draw the human figure is get things simple. Start out simple, 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 and then as you learn more and as you get better, you can become more and more and more complex. But most of us can't pack a whole lot of new information into our mind all at once. So you start simple. So if you're just beginning the human figure, you might simply start with that diagram right there. The human head, we will talk more about the human head later, is roughly two by three. Then, of course, you come around and you round off the corners, and there's a head. That'll do for now. Now, the, the human neck is about one-third of a head long. Does that make sense? So I've, I've divided in my mind, I've divided this head into three equal lengths and add one of those there. That gets us about to the shoulder length. Now I'm not going to spend a lot of time talking about the angle of the shoulders. We're going to cover that later. But for now, I just want you to roughly approximate that that's where the shoulders are. The, the very next thing we're going to run into is how wide is the human figure? And if we use, this is very typical language, I'm sure, if you've gotten a book about how to draw this, how to draw that in the human figure, then the head, head measurements are a very standard way to do the human figure. I'm going to continue this again. The question is now, how wide are the shoulders? Good question. You know what? It depends whether we're talking about a man or a woman. Here's a fascinating thing. Essentially, a man is shaped like this, and a woman is shaped like that. Let me explain what I mean by that. That's obviously extremely simple, if not mildly insulting. But uh, a man is roughly three heads wide at the shoulders and two heads wide at the hips, where a woman is two heads wide at the shoulder and three heads wide at the hips. Cool, huh? So if you can just remember that, that, that the Triangle with a point down is a male figure. Triangle with a point up is a female figure. That's just a way to help you remember. Oh, yeah, that's right, that's right. And then if you can remember, now, not only am I talking about head heights now, did you catch that? I'm talking about head widths because I'm, I'm using this unit as a measuring unit to get, to get my per, uh, ratios right. And I've said that a male shoulders are roughly three heads wide. Do you see how I did that? Took one of these heads, moved it down here, here, and here. Now that's three heads high. The navel goes about there. That's one of our ends. And uh, this guy, we'll give him a good build. He and his hips are two heads wide. Knees are here and feet are down there. Now we're getting closer, but I've just established basically two things. How wide are the shoulders and how wide are the hips? And you understand again, if this is a woman, it would be two heads, roughly two heads wide at the shoulders and three heads wide at the hips. Now, and the, the knees, the legs make up half of our body, half the height of our body, and the knees are in the middle of, that's another N, by the way. You know how to spell me, I'm sure, N-E-E. -E. Sounds good to me. In our class, that's how we spell it. <laughs> Don't tell your English teacher how we spell knee in art, but just it's our little secret, okay? Um, the, the legs make up half the length of the body, and the knees are right in the middle of the leg. In other words, the 
top part of our leg, our thigh, is exactly the same length as the bottom part of our leg, our calf and our shin. Cool, huh? So you can remember that. Now, one of the more tricky parts, because we run out of, so far everything has been easily measured by head heights or head widths. The arms don't fit into a neat, uh, a neat package like that. It turns out our upper arm is about one and a half heads long. I'm sorry, it's getting a little bit complicated, I know, but review this a couple times and you'll have it down. The upper arm is about one and a half heads long. And of course, happily, the lower arm is exactly the same length as the upper arm. Then we add to that a hand and we're all set. There he is, Mr. Superman, ready to take off and save the world. Well, I think I'll, speaking of saving, save the rest of the anatomy for our next lesson. That might be all you can handle right now. Practice this for a while. Let me know how you're doing. Check me out at dannelsonart.com. Thanks again for joining me. Bye-bye.